It's a, a quick et extract from Becoming You, which is was actually the first book I ever wrote, so generally before it got uh, fixed was rather crappy. Uh, but it's not anymore. So that's good to know. Where I'm reading from is my main character um, was in love with, no, she thought she was in love with a man, and then that was a long time ago, and that went wrong. And so now she's in living in Ireland, or she's on holiday in Ireland, and she's in love with this uh, older lady, but she was having a relationship with someone who was more available than the married older lady. But this is the uh, train journey back after having the first relations of action with the older lady. Are we all clear? <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> the half-empty train hurtled along. I actually haven't read this through yet. <laughs> so if there's a rude word, I apologise in advance. Language warning. The half-empty train hurtled along, swaying back and forth as it sped across the countryside. Early dozed, but was desperate for her own bed. She was surprised by how quickly the stations came and went, a vast contrast to the opposite journey. When her phone chimed like a doorbell, she knew it was a text message, and her instincts told her it was Olivia, that's the older lady. The dread of learning Olivia might never want to see her again loomed, but she only hesitated briefly. The text message said, sorry. I told Gavin to wake me, I'm sorry about this morning, we need to talk in person, do you agree? There was no kiss to end the message. Why was the letter X such a profound and significant way to end a message? She looked again, no X, no kiss. Her carriage was quiet, almost empty. Most people had better things to do on a Saturday night. She sighed and sent a return message agreeing that they should talk. She added two kisses before sending. The conversation would, in all probability, not be one she'd wanted, want to hear, but it was a chance she was willing to take. Her spirits lifted slightly when she considered they would meet and talk in person. She was already planning a seduction. Making love to Olivia was all she could think of. The next message from Olivia was, upon reflection, predictable. Ailey's own lack of insight was disappointing, and she had, hadn't seen it coming. The text message read, I can't look at him. I can't believe I've done this to him. I'm everything I despise. Well, as soon as your fingers went inside me, I thought of him. I'm going to hell. I thought that bit was it. <laughs> Ailey slumped, exhausted and deflated. She was nearly home, and it had been a long day. There was nothing she could do about Olivia's guilt, because she knew and she felt very little of it. Even to console her would be difficult. Ellie was the reason for the guilt in the first place. She endeavoured to pin down a time when they would talk, but Olivia was non-committal. She had her own issues to wade through. Ellie tried calling, but hung up just as the message bank clicked on. It was a gamble, but her last text message, just before the train slowed into Euston Station, said she was there for her no matter what, and she ended it with, I love you. For the next week, she received no response, and it nearly killed her.